Hey, my name is Bhumani Kola. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, this channel is all about educational tools, tips, and technology. I try to upload two videos per month at least. So if you don't want to miss out on those tips and tricks, please make sure you subscribe. The year is almost coming to an end. That means it's time for a digital planner. In today's video, I will be showing you how to create your digital planner using PowerPoint and customize it for your personal needs. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So here I am on a blank PowerPoint slide. I would like to go ahead and insert a background, right click, format background, picture and texture, insert, online pictures. I would like to have a simple neutral background. So I'm gonna say wood background, and I would like to have something like this. But if you want to have a floral background, you can always go ahead and do that. And as you can see, multiple floral backgrounds pop up. Let's try this one. That's beautiful too, but I wanna go back and keep it to very neutral, which is my wood background. And once you insert it, make sure you have the right offsets. I'm gonna change the offset to zero, zero. Very good. Now, once this is done, let's go ahead and create our digital planner. So insert, shape. I'm going to pick rounded rectangles. And the first one doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure um, it kind of looks like a journal. So that's good. I want to go ahead and change the corners. They're too rounded. That's good for me. No line. Solid fill. Pick whatever colors you want. This is a nice color too, nice and neutral. I think I'm going to keep it to this color. And now once this is done, let's go back and duplicate this one. And I want no fill, but I do want a solid line. You'll see why in a minute. I'm going to make it white. I am changing the width of my line and I'm changing the type to dash type. So it kind of gives you that stitched feeling. And now I'm gonna select all and I'm gonna group it. That way when I move, this moves with my journal. Now, once this is done, if you wanna extend it further, you can. I'm gonna use every space that I have. Perfect, now let's go ahead and create the binders. Insert, I'm inserting a brand new slide. Insert shape, click your shift so you get a perfect circle. There you go, there I have it. Absolutely no line. And I'm gonna change to gradient. And the gradient colors would be, I'm gonna make them very dark. So it kinda looks like it's a hole punch in there. I'm gonna delete all of this to start from the beginning. So I'm gonna make it a dark color. That's good. And this one is another dark color too. I'm gonna move this to the side. And I'm gonna add something with a lighter color. I'm gonna change it to linear. Just give it an angle so it looks like the hole is punched in there. Once I have it, I'm gonna go ahead and create the binder rings. I'm gonna use the connector, flowchart connector. There I have it. Now the easiest way to do is simply click on your circle, go to your home, format painter, and then simply click on this. Now that I have it, I wanna make it radial and look like a 3D effect. So I'm gonna click on the gradient as radial. I'm gonna move this all the way to the side and I'm gonna add a couple of light colors in here. So it gives me that 3D effect. I'm gonna change it to very light. As you can see, as soon as I click that, it gives me that nice 3D effect there. And what I'm going to do is Control A, Control G, move it all the way to the top. And I'm simply gonna duplicate this, Control D, Control D, Let's just say four or five, that's good. I'm gonna bring the last one all the way here and control A. As you can see, everything is selected. Simply go to arrange and align left, arrange, and I'm gonna distribute this vertically. Boom, there you have it. Now select everything, control A and control C. As soon as you copy it, let's go back to the main slide. And when you want to paste it, you want to paste it as a picture. That way you don't have to bother about if they're moving up and down. So once this is done, you don't like the size, bring them back in here. Now that we have completed the journal, let's go into this blank slide and create our tabs. I'm using one rounded, one snipped. So this is what I have. I think I'm going to change the points just a little bit so it can look like it's more snipped. I'm going to turn it. And I'm gonna copy it 
12 times, no, 11 times actually. So I need 12 months. So I'm using my control D. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There you have it. And now simply bring it down here. Select all of these. Align to the left. There you have it. And distribute it vertically. Now that this is done, let's go back, select everything and group it. Control G. Once this is grouped, let's copy this and paste it. And I think I have more space. I'm just going to drag everything. That looks perfect. And I'm going to send this to the back. There you have it. Now it kind of looks like the colors are plain blue. You might always want to go back and change your colors. And if you are confused with your color palette, I highly recommend using color.adobe.com. Go ahead, pick your swatches. There are multiple swatches here. I think I want to keep it to very neutral. But when you're picking your colors, I suggest you please keep your students with vision disabilities in your mind. Some bright colors may be too harsh for their eyes. So let's go ahead and pick something very neutral. I'm going to use my snipping tool, insert, screenshot, screen clipping, and I'm going to pick this color. I like this. I'm going to keep it all the way here. And there I have quite a few colors if I want to go ahead and choose from. Now, once this is done, let's go back and insert the text here. So the first month is going to be Jan and the next one is going to be Feb. Let me go ahead and fill this up. Now that I filled everything up, as you can see, my text is all the way in the bottom. So all I have to do is align text to the top. Adjust your left and right margins to see where you want your font to be. Now, I think I want my font to be all the way to the left. So I'm just going to increase my right margin just a little bit. Now that this is done, you might want to go back and change the colors of your tabs. But again, please keep them very neutral. So simply click on it format shape and if the format shape doesn't pop up right click and format shape here you have it solid fill pick the first one solid fill use your eyedropper and pick the color that you want there you go now second solid fill go ahead use your eyedropper pick the color that you want i'm going to go ahead and complete this so this looks perfect right now all you have to do is make sure you put in a name tag here. So insert shape rounded rectangle. There I have it. I'm going to make it completely white and no line. And voila, there's your first cover page of your journal. Now, once this is done, let's go ahead and create the inside of a journal. So here is my blank slide with the same background. Now I'm going to create the pages. Insert shape again, rounded rectangle. So you may want to use your entire slide. That's perfect. Again, no line, solid fill. I'm going to give it the same color as my journal. That's good. I'm going to duplicate this one, control D, and I'm going to make it solid line, no fill. I'm giving that stitch effect, white color, increase the width and make it to dashed lines. And once this is done, just bring it back, reduce the size and adjust it. Control A and group it so they move together. Now, once this is done, you might want to go ahead and insert your double binders. To do that, let me go back. Just copy one of this and then I'm going to copy this little circle. Control D and there I have it. I'm going to send it to the back. Now I'm going to group this. Control G, Control A and Control G. That's grouped and simply Control D. Now, all you have to do is copy it 11 times and bring it down right here. Bring the first one up here, select everything and then align to the left. And then I'm going to distribute them vertically. So it's very simple once you know how to do it. And then I'm going to group it, control G and I'm going to copy it, control C. And I'm going to come back here and paste it as a picture. So you don't want them to move. There you go. That's perfect. I'm going to reduce the size. That's perfect. Now let's go ahead and create some pages. So insert shape. I'm going to insert the rounded rectangle on one side. So this is my rectangle. I'm going to rotate it left 90 degrees. I think I like that. Again, no line. 
I want to change the color. Yeah, that's a good color. Now, once this is done, let's go ahead and give it some shadow. So it kind of looks like a real page in a book. Right shadow. Perfect. I like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this on the other side. Control D. There you go. Once I copy it, I'm going to flip it horizontally. Move it all the way up here. And as you can see, my binder is behind. So I'm just going to extend this just a little bit. I'm going to use my selection pane and I'm going to move the picture all the way to the top. So it looks like the pages are behind the binder. There you go. Now the pages look perfect. Now it looks like a perfect journal. Now that the journal is ready, I don't want to keep moving it. So control A, control G. There I have it. Now I'm going to move it wherever I want to. And once this is done, I want to go ahead and create just some pencil effects on the top. So I'm going to insert picture, online pictures. I'm going to click pencil. I went ahead and added a pencil and a line underneath. Now that this is done, I want to go ahead and group these. Control G. There you go. Control G. And I want to copy it. Control D. I'm simply going to drag this on this side so I have it on both sides. Now that this is done, I want to go ahead and create my weekdays. So I'm going to click insert table, four by six table on this side, four by six. That's good. I'm going to reduce my table, bring it here. All right, now that my table is ready, I do not want any shading in my table. So I'm going to table design, shading, no fill but I definitely want all the borders. So all borders, there you go. That's perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill it up. Now what I'm going to do is once this is done, I'm simply going to copy the table. Copy it and paste it. Drag it all the way to this side. All right, so let me go ahead and change the name. But if you want your week to start with Monday, you can always go ahead and do that. I'll leave this raw file for you so you can always edit, change, and customize it as per your needs. Now, once this is done, I want to go ahead and delete this column right here. I'm going to delete this entire column. That's good. And I'm going to insert a place where I can write notes. So insert, shape, and I'm going to pick the rounded corners one. There I have it. I'm going to... Flip it, which are, where are my rounded corners yet? Yeah, right here. I'm going to change the color. This is too bright for me, so I'm going to make it color fill, maybe much more lighter color, something like this, where I can write my notes on. And now I'm going to insert a text saying notes. And I'm simply going to drag it and leave it here. So I went ahead and added a simple text box here. So once this is done, I highly recommend Control A, Control G to group it and Control C to copy it. I do not want you all to do anything on this slide because there is always a chance you might move things around. So once you copy it, go ahead, insert a new slide and paste this as a picture. Now you can see you don't have to move anything. Everything is nice and embedded as a picture here. You can increase the size, you can decrease the size, do whatever you want with it. So again, keep in mind you need 12 months. So let me go ahead and copy this 12 times. Again, I am pasting this in each slide as a picture so I don't have to worry about altering any of the lines or text boxes. I went ahead and copied the slide 12 times and I did not copy it as an editable file. I copied it as a picture so I don't have to worry about altering anything. Once that's done, I'm going to go back to my first slide and I'm going to link each slide to each month. So January, right click, link, place in this document. Remember, it's not slide two, it's slide three. Slide two is my editable slide. So three, okay. Go back to Feb, right click, link, slide four. OK, I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of them and I'll be right back. So I went ahead and linked each slide, each tab to each slide. As you can see, slide three, slide four, slide five, slide six. Once this is done, I'm simply going to select all of this, copy it and paste it right here. Control V and I'm going to move this to the front. If I have to change it, I will. 
And the best part is when you link it the first time here and copy it, the links will continue for all the rest of your slides. So what I'm going to do is copy all of this to all 12 slides and be right back. So I went ahead and added all the tabs to all the 12 slides and I made sure I have the editable slide all the way in the bottom so you all can edit, change the colors, customize it the way you want. I even have the binders and the tabs here just in case you don't like the colors that I have in the downloadable file. Now once that's done, let's go ahead and check if this works. So when I click on Jan, January comes up, Feb, March, April, May, June, July. So it works perfectly fine. Again, I will have the link to the downloadable file in the description box below. You can also save this interactive PowerPoint presentation as an interactive PDF. So file, save as PDF. I'm going to say digital planner, save. I'm gonna replace the file. And as you can see here, I have my digital planner. Let's go ahead and check if the tabs work. Jan, very good. Feb, March, August, December, so on and so forth. So everything works here too. You might wanna add a home tab here just in case, but that's totally up to you. Now let's go ahead and see how we can upload this into Microsoft Teams. There are a couple of ways that you can use it in your classes. As you can see, I have created a simple example for the month of May. You can write down when your homeworks are due, tests are due, class projects, make it colorful for your students. So there are two ways of uploading this into your Teams. One, you will save the file as PowerPoint presentation, which is .ppsx or you will export the file as PDF. So here I am on my Teams. All I did was uploaded both my files. I uploaded my .ppsx file and I uploaded my PDF file. Now let's go ahead and take a look. So this is my .ppsx just as a PowerPoint slideshow. Students will not be able to edit this. Let's go to the month of May. As you can see, here is my month of May. The students have the homeworks due, the assignments due, the class projects due. You can also upload this as a PDF and have it as a tab. So this is my PDF as a tab. And this is interactive as well. So that's that will take me to the month of Jan. That's gonna take me to the month of February. Let's go to the month of May. As you can see here, I'm in month of May. Just to give you an idea of how you can present it in your classes or have it for your students. I've created a couple of homeworks, tests, make it colorful. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned how to create a digital planner using PowerPoint and customize it for your personal needs. If you did, please make sure you like and subscribe. And if you think it's worth sharing, please go ahead and do so because you and me both know this is the time for digital planners. I will leave a link in the description box below for Microsoft Teams, Canvas and technology playlists. Do not forget to check them out. And please do not forget to comment in the comment section below what you like and dislike about digital planners. Like always, happy teaching and please take care of yourself and wish you all a happy new year.